I've been thinking about charter schools and thinking about reform of the structure of education. How can we do education better? How can we rewrite the ground rules and create new opportunities for teachers and parents? And um, soon after the election, I really hadn't been thinking much about Washington. I was in um, I was in New York at the time. Um, I got a call from a congressman, and uh, he said, "Hi, my name is Steve Gunderson, and would you like to come work with us, with me?" And I didn't really know much about him. And I said, "Where are you from? Where do you represent exactly?" <laughs> and he's from Wisconsin. He was a very, very smart guy. Uh, a senior a member of the House Education and Labor Committee at the time, uh, a sort of leader of the moderate Republicans. And um, he said, I'm from Wisconsin. I represent La Crosse Eau Claire, which um, I didn't know at the time. It was a big dairy district. And I said, uh, Mr. Anderson, you know, I'm from New York City. I've never been to Wisconsin, and I've never really been close to a cow. And, uh, and he said, that's okay, even though my, I'm referred to as Mr. Dairy. Uh, or, or he didn't say it, but I heard that. Uh, he was called Mr. Derry because that was his focus, and he was uh, chairman of the Agriculture Subcommittee. But he said, but this will be my last term, and uh, uh, I'm not running for re-election, and I've got great committee staff on agriculture, and I have a passion for education reform and urban reform and civil rights and serving students who need better opportunities. And so in my last term, freed up as I am from concerns about re-election, I want to devote a lot of my time to those issues. And so I'd love for you to come work on those issues. So once I was reassured I didn't have to learn too much about dairy, I, uh, I was excited about it, and I said yes. And I came to D.C. to work with uh, Congressman Gunderson. Initially, we had no focus on D.C. We were not at all focused on reforming D.C. schools. We, um, Mr. Gunderson had an idea to reform the Federal Department of Education, the education and workforce training um, role of the federal government. And so he, um, he had an idea to uh, merge some of the functions in education and labor and restructure the agencies, the departments. And that's what I was initially working on. And then um, at the time, D.C. was having a lot of difficulties. It was in uh, financial straits. It was management problems. And a control board had been appointed uh, to oversee uh, D.C. government and, and run it really effectively. And um, about the same time, uh, Speaker Gingrich, uh, we, were, we were watching him from the congressional offices, and I was doing my work. And, and he's on TV, and he, and he announces that it's not enough to just address the financial aspects of D.C., but we need to improve the life of citizens in D.C., and we need to make it a model city as our nation's capital. And so we need to work on economic opportunities, educational opportunities, safety, a range of issues. And he said he was appointing a task force of senior members to work on each of those issues. And he named Steve Gunderson, my congressman, my ears perked up, to work on education. And, uh, and he said, Steve's going to work on this, and we're going to fix this. And uh, this was somewhat news to me. And uh, I talked to the congressman, and he said, uh, well, I heard something about it, but I didn't know he was going to announce it. It, was, uh, it wasn't quite as much of a shock, but there was still some surprise with him as well. And, um, and so that's how it started. And we started having meetings with church leaders, with ministers, with business leaders, with a wide range of people. And, and that broad involvement, uh, I would say, was just as important as theories about education reform, because you can have any theories you, you want, but unless you get a certain level of community buy-in and the community feels you're doing something, uh, at least important critical parts of the community, you're doing something to help them and with them rather than to them, um, then it was going to be a, a very difficult slog if we hadn't done that. And particularly when you think about um, you know white Republicans in Congress and a predominantly minority D.C. Uh, community whose students we were really aiming to help. It couldn't have been something that we were doing to them. Now, there were some people that always still had that perception. It wasn't all, you know, easygoing, but, but there was a serious effort, and there was appreciation. I think there was acknowledgement, even from people whose opinions we ended up, in the end, not agreeing with, that there was a great effort to, to reach out and, and to hear them out and to try to put together a range of ideas. We need to create similar avenues for doing things very differently in curriculum, teaching, 
And to do that, testing. And so standards and testing also need to be rethought. And we need to create avenues where people can do things very, very differently that don't necessarily align with one particular set of standards, but are also rigorous. That maybe are a different way of doing things. Because standards, um, standards can be very positive, but they can also be constraining. Sometimes people who aren't been involved in curriculum and teaching think of standards purely as minimums. Well, if they're just minimums, you can go way beyond them. That's not the reality when you're designing, when you're running schools and designing curriculum and teaching. They define what you teach, how you teach it to some degree, and how you sequence it from grade to grade. And if you want to do something very differently, that can actually be quite difficult. And we don't want a, quote, compliance mindset on delivering instruction. That's what we're trying to do with charter schools. Excuse me, delivering schools. That's what we're trying to do with charter schools. But we also don't want a compliance mindset on the instructional side, uh, which, which alignment often, unfortunately, translates into. If I just check off this standard, check off this standard, check off this standard, I've complied, I've aligned, and everything's going to be okay. So I think at some point to really get that next stage, we're going to need to marry, keep the good of charter schools, and add a similar element when it comes to curriculum and teaching.